Hello and welcome to Science Unscripted. It's Connor here. And Gib. You know, one of my favorite science prizes, possibly, no, that it is my favorite science prize. These are the Ig Nobel Prizes, not the Nobel Prizes. Mm -hmm. Those are very, very important, often very dry research that seemed kind of unimportant to most of us 30 years ago. And then suddenly... Some material science advancement that no, nobody knows the materials. Right, right. The molecule's too long to even pronounce. It's difficult to keep up with those. What's yeah. really fun to keep up with are the Ig Nobel Prizes, which are awarded every year to science that makes you laugh first and then think. So I'm going to give you some examples of the winners from 2022, or a couple of them. This is not, you know... This is last year's prizes. Yeah, not an extensive list here. Okay. Um, in engineering, it uh, looks like Japanese researchers won the award for trying to discover the most efficient way for people to use their fingers when turning a knob. That was the winner. Gabe, you're not, you're not a laughing. A knob? A knob, like a doorknob. The most efficient way. You're not smiling at all. It's supposed to make you laugh first and then think. Whatever, that one didn't work with you. <laughs> okay, how about physics? Um, a bunch of researchers trying to understand how ducklings manage to swim in formation. Safety engineering, a guy named Magnus Gens, I think in Norway maybe, for developing a moose crash test dummy. So these they, these are the wacky, almost t to the point where you you would think that the researchers were intending to get the Ig Nobel. Right. Who's <laughs> going to do a study on how to turn a knob? So, yeah, that's right? that. that I, and the, the, what makes it more funny is that they weren't. This is real research somewhere in the corner of an academic journal that you've never heard of, where scientists, doctors, research, whoever, they're trying to find answers to real questions. That takes us to some research that made us laugh. First, I would definitely say, but the longer we thought about it, the more serious it became. And the title of that research, it was published in the Journal of Cosmetic Dermatology, was The Scrotum, A Comparison of Men's and Women's Aesthetic Assessments. Okay, so is there such thing as a beautiful scrotum? Or can human beings find the scrotum beautiful? That was the question that uh, lead author Paula Albrecht set out to answer, and we are going to go to her now for more. Science Unscripted. So hi, my name is Paula, and I'm the leading author on a study that was published about scrotum aesthetics. Paula, your study has possibly the most devastating conclusion I've ever read in, 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 in human language. Can you just, can you word for word read the conclusion of your study? So the conclusion of the study was ultimately it was barely possible to identify a beautiful scrotum. We must speak instead of the least ugly one. So, so scrotums are... So there is no beautiful scrotum. No, I wouldn't say that, but that was the conclusion of the study, unfortunately. So you had a total of, of, of four scrotums or scrota. I don't even know how to say the plural of that. It, it's scrota. Scrota. <laughs> um, and I've got, I've, I've got the photographs here. They're in the study. Gabe, I don't think you've seen mm -hmm. these. I'll slide these over to you. Um, it, what, did, what, what did people say? Obviously, we know that nobody found, um, nobody found them beautiful, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, but what, what, mm -hmm. what, did you, what did you notice when you looked at the responses or when you looked at the data? Well, so the first scrotum was the most ugly one, or rated as the most ugly one, and the last one was rated as the least ugly one. So there was a possibility that people were just shocked at the beginning um, when they saw the scrotum and they were like, what am I doing here? So with time, they just got used to it. And I think that if they would have had more pictures to rate, maybe the um, rating would have gone up over time. Yeah, and... Um... Maybe some color would have helped. The the black and white, the for, the two of them, I th they look identical. I'm looking at four, di twelve different shots of four different scrota. Wh which one won again? Number four. Number four here the, down here. Number four. Mm -hmm. There's there, there's some higher definition on this on this. <laughs> you can see more of what's in there, I guess. Or as Paula was saying, it could be that it, this is a part of the human body that almost nobody. <laughs> thinks about, talks about, and definitely you don't see pictures of it very often. The first picture is shocking. You have to get used to actually looking at images of this part of the body. Right. That's a good point. Mm. What was it about that fourth one? 
we don't know what it was about it, but because we didn't ask specifically, why do you like this more than the other one? It was just a Likert scale with like minus three to plus three to rate each single photo. So we don't know what they, why they um, rated it like that. Is that what your study was about, to find that personal preference and find the objective characteristics of, of the scrotum? Yeah, it was about because getting like a scrotum tightening is super trendy at the moment or it's becoming more and more trendy. So we wanted to figure out what gender prefers what size and optics of a scrotum. So if a man or a person with a scrotum wants to go and get a tightening operation, they can have data that says women prefer that kind of scrotum and men prefer that kind of scrotum if you don't know what you actually prefer yourself. So you have like a yeah, a direction that you can go to. Is there an ethical um, component to, to, to work like this? Because these are questions, let me be completely honest, that I have never had. I've never thought about <laughs> the beauty of my scrotum. And I'm, I'm assuming that most people in society haven't either. And now, now these questions are, are popping up into our, our brains. Should we be yeah. thinking about this stuff, Paula? I think this is a very, very critical topic. And I think that you should love your body no matter how how it looks. But also, I think if you have problems with your, for example, scrotum in this case, and you're very unhappy about it, I think it's great if surgeons have like um, a variety of studies that shown that it's normal to do this and that you can feel comfortable and you're not abnormal doing this. But for sure, you shouldn't push a narrative that you have to have a scrotum surgery. Yeah, but what if without work like this, I would never have come to the conclusion that my scrotum is ugly? <laughs> you, you know what I mean? That, that's kind of what I was getting at. Yeah, for sure. So I think obviously every beauty surgeon thing is very critical to view it and you should have a very stable um yeah a very being very stable mentally before you do any surgery like that and i think every beauty surgery should always be supervised with therapy next to it so i really really recommend that and i hope that this study doesn't contribute to people being more self-aware or self-conscious about their scrotum Part of the reason, to be totally honest, that this grabbed my attention was it fits into what I view as a trend, which is mm -hmm. increasing plastic surgery. It seems to have become more normalized, the idea of uh, mm -hmm. doing something to your lips or to your cheeks or to your face mm -hmm. or to intimate areas, as they're called in Germany. Mm -hmm. um, is, is that just me overreacting to something that's not happening or is this is this becoming normalized? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But there's also a component which is like, yeah, a critique in this study because mostly older men are doing the surgery. So the pictures of the scrotum are from pretty young men. So the study should be do done again with older men because then the possibility is higher that you also actually have some problems and it might be too saggy and it could be hurtful. And in that um, putting that together you could also make it more pretty so that I think that's okay but for young men I think it's very problematic to also be thinking about just being more pretty down there which is definitely not necessary because everyone is perfect the way they are but yeah for sure it's very critical to view it. Paula how, how do you convince in this case four men uh, to, ha to not only have their, their, their scrotums or scrota photographed, that's one part, mm -hmm. but then rated and kind of brutally rated at the end of the day. Well, that's again a very good question. So it was very hard to find some people actually, but then over a friend who is going to another university who had like a university club where they are wild, they're always doing naked parties and stuff. And I was like, oh, do you mind sending a message in your group chat asking if I'm allowed to photograph some men naked and do the study for? They were actually super keen because they were like, buddies, buddies are nothing, you should be sexualizing. And I really support that. So those group of men were super happy to do it, but I didn't know any of them. So when I was going to the houses, I didn't know what I should bring them to thank them for doing it. So I brought wine and chocolate because I didn't know what they were like. So the first man opened the door almost naked and I was standing in front of him with wine and chocolate. And then I was like, oh, well, this could just go anywhere. And then it was a very funny thing and they were all very lovely, but it was definitely something I will remember for the rest of my life. And that was Paula Albrecht talking to us there from Hamburg, Germany. 
Uh, if you're interested in seeing some of the photos that we've referenced or that we did reference as part of that interview, again, uh, the article is called The Scrotum, A Comparison of Men's and Women's Aesthetic Assessments. A lot to digest there. Yeah, we called up a, a couple plastic surgeons here in Germany and asked about this procedure. It is it is done. Yeah. Uh, it, it is being done. Men are going in and getting their scrota tucked. Their scrotum tucked. Um, no, no yeah. it, it's happening. And, and to, to sorry to jump in, but... I do view those surgeries on scrota kind of in connection with surging numbers of labiaplasties. This is a plastic surgery for altering the labia minora, so the inner labia. These are the folds of skin surrounding the vaginal entry. And I think the last statistic I saw was up to 2019. There'd been a 200 and something percent increase in those surgeries in the U.S. because beauty standards have changed. I don't know. A lot of people connect it to pornography and these these ideals that aren't attainable. And it just seems sad that 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 people are going in for these surgeries when they just uh, objectively aren't. I, they're not medically necessary. Of course, there's the medical aspect. Same with with scrotum surgery. Mm. If you've had, yeah, we're not talking about that here. If if there are, if there is a medical necessity for any procedure, I'm not going to say a word about it. But if it's just to, if if it's just to, to make you feel better about yourself, then you better have an exact idea of what you actually want to change about your body. Don't go into it with a, with a vague sense of optimism just by having any procedure that it's going to make you feel better. If you dislike yourself before the procedure, it's probably not going to help. If you don't have a clear idea, and unless that, you have a, an, an absolutely clear idea of what what needs to be changed and 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 why that's going to make you feel better, then well, I would be very very reluctant. Well, and, and, and when and, it comes to having plastic surgery, and in the sense, this study is exactly that. It's an attempt to find a definition for beauty. What are you? What do you want? Or to, to give people an idea of what they could be searching for or are searching for. They just didn't know it. I mean, mm. come on, you go and get a haircut, right? They've got those posters up on the wall of different haircuts, mm. hairstyles. They've got the books you can flip through. Yeah. That it, It's kind yeah. of a similar idea. We're never going to be able to go back to a, a point in time where hair didn't matter, right? <laughs> we're, we're, we're past that. But whether we need to th worry about what our scrotum looks like? So, yeah. <laughs> are we heading that's... towards that? That was the question that we talked about with Paula Albrecht. Are, are we, by talking about this right now, leading Create, creating that world, yeah. creating that world where men start to look in the mirror at that part of their body, and they didn't before. No, no. you don't. You don't look. You, the, I, I don't think guys tend to look at that. <laughs> really, um, all of that said, Gabe, you and I approached this topic as we said earlier first with laughter, mm -hmm. uh, and we've learned some stuff along the way. I'm going to add a couple points here at the end, but before that, we did come into this with a lot of skepticism. And uh, I, a lot of that for me has been kind of washed away by talking to Paula and now by looking at what was a surprising dearth of, of research, a lack of research on whether people tend to be happy or not. Following, following Follow, a procedure. Following aesthetic surgery, plastic surgery. In general. In general, not mm -hmm. necessarily intimate, mm -hmm. but in general. If I've missed research out there, I welcome our listeners out there to please send it my way. I found two that seemed most relevant. One was from 2012, and this was uh, the U University of Bochum mm -hmm. here in Germany con in connection with Switzerland. And there, I'm just going to read it here. They compared the outcomes in a sample of about 500 patients who underwent aesthetic surgery and then 250, let's say, participants who were interested in it but didn't do it. So it, it, it's a good comparison. People who didn't do it, who was happier okay. afterwards? That was what they're trying to figure out. Participants were followed three, six, and 12 months after aesthetic surgery. Nice. And overall, the results reveal positive outcomes of receiving aesthetic surgery across areas, including anxiety, social phobia, depression, body dysmorphia, goal attainment, quality of life, on and on and on, all the way up to self-esteem. And among those dissatisfied with a particular physical feature and considering aesthetic surgery, undergoing a surgery appears to result in positive self-reported psychological changes. That, wow. that surprised me. And it's not what so I... So the question is, do you I, regret it? You, you had the procedure done. Do you regret it? You didn't have the procedure done. It seems like the people who didn't have the procedure done regret it more than the ones uh, who did. 
Well, they at the very least, what they're saying here is that the people who then went on to have the surgery saw boosts, whereas I would assume that the others were were constant, mm -hmm. right? If you haven't had anything done to you, however you feel is probably how you're still going to feel. The others had seen boosts. Um, 2011, one year earlier, out of Norway, kind of the same the same idea, except they had 130 women who had gone to Norwegian cosmetic surgery clinics. And here, what I liked about it is they checked in five years later. Yeah. And uh, the results, an improvement in both general appearance satisfaction and satisfaction with the body part operated on five years after surgery. A small increase in self-esteem was observed as well. There probably is a difference between uh, multiple plastic surgeries that are happening because of an underlying psychological issue mm -hmm. and plastic surgeries that occur because there's a very specific part of your body that you're extremely dissatisfied with one and that you would you would like to consider fixing let's face it i i had braces my teeth are straight because i had braces and that's often brought up in the discussion about plastic surgery well you've you've done something to to make yourself look better all right what, what's the difference if you're using a knife or using wrenches well, i didn't make that choice to have braces my parents made it for me <laughs> i i would not have put them on yeah. I would not have gone to Dr. Triller, the orthodontist in Beaver Dam, Wisconsin. I wouldn't have done it if I had the choice. I would, I, I would prefer that to have I, my teeth all over the place. I no, think. you wouldn't. I, I think I <laughs> your would. Teeth all you know me. You know no, the way you, I roll. You know, I do. Okay. I'm happy that Dr. Hager did the work on my mouth that he did. <laughs> uh, tough time having braces and headgear. In any case, we've come a long way here. We're talking about braces now when we started talking about scrotum aesthetics. But we've, I at least have actually come a long way here. Went into this research thinking this is ridiculous and possibly very harmful to even talk about. Mm. Po maybe we shouldn't even talk about it on our show. That's how bad it is. To thinking there is a very limited case use for it here. That's what it sounded like from Paula. These tend to be older men going in for the procedure. Yeah. And it seems like, based on the research I just talked about, that people tend to be happier if there's a particular thing that's bothering them and they fix it. I would love to know for the people listening to this what what you guys think of the idea of, of amending your scrotum, even talking about this. What are what are your thoughts? A lot on... of our, a lot of our listeners are women. They don't have a scrotum. Yeah. Well, do they prefer a, a do they okay. have an idea of what a nice scrotum would look like? I don't <laughs> or plastic Any, surgery anything that you guys it, yeah. have to say as always send it to sudw.com and then we'll we'll be smarter for it <laughs>